Hi everyone, welcome back to Where the Gnomes Live. I'm so excited today, I'm going to show you how I made this cute little mushroom house. I worked on it all weekend. Uh, I've been promising this for many months now and I just never found the time uh, to do this video. And I'm so glad that I didn't because this one is so much easier than the ones I've been making all this time. Usually I make a mushroom house and I cover it in clay. This one has no clay in it at all. And it's a super sturdy little house. So this technique that I'm about to show you can be used to make very large projects as well. In fact, I made my gnome home exactly the same way. My gnome home is about three or four feet tall. I think it's about that tall. And it's really wide and there's about 11 rooms. I just kept building onto it, building onto it. Uh, sometimes I would think I was done and then I would build another room. Uh, if you haven't seen the gnome home, you can find the link to a tour of that home in the description box below. So what we need to make this house is very easy stuff. Uh, you should have it in your cupboard right now. Uh, tin foil. Just make sure it doesn't say non-stick because you need uh, masking tape to stick to it. And then masking tape. Make sure you get the wide stuff because that will cut your time down a lot. And then paper towel. Any paper towel will do. And uh, tacky glue. You don't need a great big jug like this. I just buy this because I go through a lot of glue. And then uh, whatever paint colors you choose. And then if you want to do any stone work like I've done, uh, you just need a cup tray. So just go to McDonald's and grab a coffee and ask for a cup tray. Or an egg carton. Egg carton will do the same thing. And if you want to use any uh, moss like I have, I buy uh, sheet moss. I just get this at Walmart. And then uh, you can decide what you're going to make your window frames and your door out of. I use, I use wooden coffee stir sticks that I get at the dollar store. But you can build your frames out of anything you want. Uh, you don't need to use wooden sticks like I have. And a, a piece of cardboard to build your stem on. So that's it. Now we can just get started. I hope you enjoy the uh, video. And if you do make yourself a little mushroom or a tree or whatever you make out of this technique, I would sure love to see it. You can post pictures on my Facebook page, Dollhouses and the things that go in them. The link to the page is in the description box below. We're going to start with a small piece of cardboard. This is a sturdy piece. You don't need a very large piece to start off with. We can always add to the size of this after our stem is built. We just need a small piece for our stem. And in fact, a smaller piece is much easier to work on as you're working around your stem because you have to turn it a lot. So it's just better to have a, a piece that's large enough for your stem and small enough to work with. So I have my hot glue gun heating up as we speak and I'm gonna be making a small a mushroom house and that's going to be small enough for this little guy here. I have a bunch of these and I always have wanted to make them a home and now I'm doing that today. So I'm going to be using tin foil and I'm shaping the base first and this is how we start off. So this is a long strip of tin foil. So this is a this is a long piece. This is actually folded in half already. So now I'm going to make it the same width as this one here. Okay, I'm going to fold up this one here. And I'm going to roll up the one bottom. I just realized when we were taping there I had glue all over my hands. I was working on another project so I have dry glue. So if you see any skin hanging off of me, it's not skin, it's glue. Anyway, so we want to make the base. You see what I'm doing? I'm trying to get a base going here. And this is going to be the start of our little house, the bottom part. So I'm just getting the bottom of it shaped out because I want the bottom to be like a bulb. I want the mushroom stem to bulb out at the bulb bottom. I think that's a good size right there. So I'm going to hot glue that into place and I can still play around with the shape after it's hot glued into place. So I'll glue that piece in. Okay, so there's the bottom part, and I'm going to build up the walls in a minute. I'm just going to go inside and just flatten out these, just push this 
part that's all bunched up in, and I'm going to be covering all of this with masking tape. Now I ran out of my wide masking tape, so this takes me a little bit longer than it should. Uh, they have big wide masking tapes, and those are the ones that you want to be getting. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see what I'm doing in a masking tape. Every part of that tin foil on the inside and the outside and I want to maintain that round shape at the bottom so when you do the bottom on the outside I do it from the bottom upwards so I maintain that shape that bulby shape at the bottom I'm actually going to build up the wall a little bit higher now and I'm not sure exactly how high I want the wall to go, but I'm just going to hot glue this in place and then I'm going to add my masking tape again. And then I'm going to worry about the height once I get the mushroom cap made. Because I really don't have a plan as we speak. Okay, I'm just building up the wall now. And I was reminded that tin foil really holds the heat of the hot glue. So if I need to push it in, I use something just to hold it instead of my fingers because I don't want to touch that tin foil because it's very hot. Okay, so the entire surface has been covered in masking tape and now I'm going to build the mushroom cap and then I'm going to decide if I want to cut these walls down or not or leave them this tall. I don't know yet, so I'll just do the mushroom cap and the mushroom cap takes a lot, a lot, a lot of tin foil but you can do any shape you want. Um, you can do one of these flat big ones. I'm working on another project as we speak and this is a huge mushroom in progress. So you can do a shape like that. Here's another one. More like a bulb shape. So this is how I do my mushroom caps. These are two pieces of tin foil. I took a long piece, folded it in half, and then that one on the floor is a long piece folded in half. And then I just crisscross them. I got another one here, and that's going to go over as well. There, I just added another one. So that's four pieces, and they're all crisscrossed. And now I'm going to roll up the edges. I'm just going to start rolling up the edges and bunching them up. So there's my edges are rolled up, so now it's much easier to work with. So this is how I, exactly how I do my big mushroom caps, the ones that you've seen, uh, the big wide ones. But this one I'm going to make into a little bit more of a bell shape. So to get the bell more of a bell shape, I'm going to have to make a slit along one of the sides up to the middle. And then I can fold those together and you see I'm already getting a, a much more of a bulby shape there. So there's my final cap there. It's got some really odd shapes to it and that's what I wanted. So this side here is where I'm going to put the front door. There's going to be a front door here and probably two windows right there. So now you want to decide, is this going to be a mushroom that you can see into? So when you have dollhouses, usually there's a big wide open space where you can uh, add your furniture and play with the dolls and stuff like that. So I'm going to add a little bit of an opening here opposite of the front door. And I'm just going to use my knife. It's very easy to cut this. You don't need an X-Acto knife. So I'm going to go right here okay so I cut small squares of paper towel, I got a whole stack of them I tore the edges so the glue is mixed in with a little bit of water because if you don't mix it in with water it's going to be really hard to get the excess glue off your paper towel so all I do is just run the surface along that glue 
fold it and then pull the excess off. And when you do that, when you open it up, just make sure you get the top edge soaked with glue as well. Then you just lay it over top the surface like that. And I'm going to try to do this without any wrinkles with as least number of wrinkles as I can. So when I do my next piece, part of it's going to overlap the first piece. Okay, you're just going to repeat this until the entire uh, surface is covered. So I'm going to do the exterior first and then I'm going to dry it. Then I can flip it over and do the interior of the cap. So we're going to do the cap and the house itself. So now the door and the windows, of course you're going to do them whatever way you want to do them. You probably have a great idea in mind already. I'll just show you how I'm going to do mine just in case I can give you an idea. So I'm building up the door frame out of tin foil and masking tape and then I'm going to cover this with paper towel just like I did the mushroom stem that's going to sit there. I'm not going to have a door that opens. So I just took a little thing that I'm going to use for a door and I'm going to push that in here right in the middle and I'm going to glue that in. And then I can put that on there. And then the, my window windows, I made little templates out of cardboard and I got masking tape on the back. So I can figure out exactly where I want these windows before committing to anything. So I can move those templates around if I need to. So I'll just test and see if that's a good, and see that's a perfect height right there. So the little templates are very helpful. So now what I'll do is I'll just trace around those with a pen and then I'll cut through them because I'm going to have windows that you can see into. The door will not open, it will just look like it does. So my windows are cut and I put masking tape all around the open edges and made sure that the masking tape wasn't so wide I cut the masking tape so I could put my frame on after I'm using uh, wooden coffee stir sticks as my frame. So now I can paint the exterior of the mushroom and then I can put my frames on after that. And same as the inside, uh, make sure that the masking tape is not so wide so you can paint and then you can add your frames on the inside. So I ended up cutting around the base and decided just to keep, keep the mushroom stem uh, base very simple. And I'm just adding some sheet moss now. And it's this stuff that comes in big rolls. I use it a lot in my dollhouses, excellent stuff. And I just, this stuff isn't attached yet, I just dip it in, uh, dip it back in glue. And put it on that way. And that floor is one that I just did a tutorial for here on YouTube. And if you want to make one like that, then you can find the link to it in the description box below. Uh, if you take a template of the floor you have now, a uh, piece of paper and then put that piece of paper on cardboard. Make sure the template fits and you can put the stones right on top of that and then put it inside your mushroom. That always works good. Or you can put the stones right on top of the floor that you have inside your mushroom right now. I also have a tutorial for a wooden floor, hardwood wooden floor, and you'll find that linked in the description box as well. Okay, my little window frames are just simply coffee stir sticks, these little wooden coffee stir sticks. The frame is done exactly the way I did the interior. I just did uh, one by one. I didn't make a frame and then glue it in. I just glued a stick on each side and then one on top and one on the bottom. And then I made the little shutters. And I made the little shutters by gluing these little sticks, these little coffee stir sticks, side by side on poster board. And then I cut out the shape that I wanted. And then, then I stain this uh, with instant coffee. I have a tutorial on how to make hardwood wooden floors and it's done the exact same way with the same sticks, with the same material, and I uh, stain and finish it the same way. So if you want to see that um, tutorial on how to make these, then you can look in the description box below. I have a link to that. The little flower pots are made the exact same way I made the mushroom stem. Uh, tin foil, masking tape, and then covered in paper towel. And then I painted red. And those are just hot glued into place and I just 
uh, put flowers and stuff inside. So here's one that I made uh, in a wood color for another house. So that is just tin foil, masking tape, paper towel, and then I stained it with instant coffee. This one. This one I obviously colored the same uh, color as the mushroom caps. And so all these details, like uh, shutters and frames, flower pots, hinges even. These hinges here were made from uh, egg cartons that I just cut and painted black. Uh, the doorknob is a little bead that I glued on there. All those kind of things are just an individual personality. Um, we're all going to like different things. So I did. That's why I didn't put this step by step in the tutorial because you want to do it your way. I just have ideas that I pass along. You don't need to make the shutters with wood. You don't need to make the frames with wood. You can do that with cardboard or clay or whatever you you want to make. And whatever details you add to your house is going to be special and unique to you. So hopefully I gave you some ideas to get you started on those things. And the paint itself all around is antique white. I mix this with just a couple drops of yellow, like a bright yellow, mix it all up. And then once that was dry, I used a bigger brush and the thing I do on my mushroom stems is I pull a brown through it very, very lightly. I get a damp brush, no excess water, just a damp brush, and lightly dip it in the brown, very, very lightly. You want to get the excess off on a piece of paper and then take your brush and then just pull it along the stem. And you keep doing that till you have the look that you want. And the entire surface was then given a coat of satin sealer. And the interior walls is antique white with a satin sealer over top of that. Now the one thing I want to mention is when you paint over anything that has been um, finished with uh, paper towel dipped in glue or newspaper dipped in glue, the first two or three coats the paint will crack. It'll be full of little cracks so if that happens to you don't be alarmed. It just needs another coat of paint. Usually within three or four coats the cracks are completely gone. Next I'll show you how to do the stonework. This is just made with cup trays. I just used one cup tray to make my chimney. The chimney frame is made with uh, tin foil, covered in masking tape, then covered in paper towel. Let it dry and then it's ready for the stone or brick. You can cut the cup tray with scissors and make little bricks. That's very time consuming. Or you can just tear the cup tray and make little stones. I prefer tearing them and just applying them as stone. But of course, as always, the choice is up to you. So I'm ready to get started. Here's my pile of stones that I'll be using. Now the cup tray has two sides. There's the outside and then there's the inside. The inside has no texture really, it's just smooth. So the parts I like to use is this part right here where you get all the texture. So this pile here is one cup tray. Okay, and then you can take each stone and then use a paintbrush and paint the glue on and then put it on. I don't bother doing that. I just dip it right in glue because it's a whole lot faster and I don't uh, really care exactly about placements as long as you don't have big gaps between them. If you end up with big gaps between them, it's not a big deal. You can just, after the piece is dry, look at it and if there is a big gap then just fill it in with more cup tray. When I first did these a couple of years ago, uh, I spent just too much time worrying about each piece, uh, fitting each piece, painting the back, and uh, I guess if you were doing a real special project where you wanted to add a certain design, then that would be worth it. But for on a project like this, it doesn't really matter. I think it looks just as cool uh, if you do it this way. And the beauty is in the imperfection, I think, anyway. Uh, when this piece is all done, I usually help the drying process along by using a hair dryer or a heat gun. And I just dry it for a few minutes until it's dry to the touch and then I'll just let it dry on its own after that. Once your chimney is dry then you just hot glue it into place. So that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you got yourself a little mushroom house made. And remember if you did make yourself a little mushroom house please post pictures on my Facebook page Dollhouses and the things that go in them. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon.